Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Can you uh, full screen that, expand the slides? Welcome everyone, another CNCSCI working group meeting. <clears throat> um, this meeting is being recorded. And if you would like to, again, add any notes, um, feel free to put those in. Let's go ahead and see the first bit here. Cross-cloud CI updates. <clears throat> so this is on the CNCF CI dashboard. Next slide. We've added um, a new project in Envoy. has been added to CNCFCI. There's going to be a talk about this one, adding new projects. Um, Oracle Cloud integration uh, is in progress. They right now working on integrating the storage components and other parts for Oracle. <clears throat> And then some minor updates for various versions, projects that continue to be in progress. And so saying adding new projects will be presented um, at Shanghai KubeCon. I'm trying to get more projects to participate in adding themselves and contributing. And um, we'll also be updating the docs to this is part of getting a quick start for using CNCFCI, and we're planning on some updates for the overall dashboard, the UX. And one of the things that is rolling in place and should be live soon is um, showing NA whenever the an earlier step uh, failed, then we'll show the status badge will be NA. Um, <clears throat> Next slide. Also working with several groups on using the various uh, technology behind the CNCFCI. The Network Service Mesh Working Group is using the provisioner, the Kubernetes provisioner called CrossCloud. That's what does the multi-cloud provisioning and starting to use that for testing. And we've also been helping the network service group directly on some of their other CI issues and testing for um, the project across different network cards and other things. So it's not just cloud specific, but some hardware specific things that the group has to deal with. Taylor, until we get Brow integration, VMware is using a version of the provisioner to do our out of tree cloud provider testing, setting up the cluster with the fork of that. Oh, that's cool. Is that using the, the version that can- It's not directly using it. Uh, we forked it and then made some changes mm -hmm. uh, to, to be more uh, specific to us, but it's, it's the provisioner is the basis of it. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see uh, more groups starting to use the underlying tech, fork or not. Uh, next slide. So um, this is outlining some of the thoughts for next goals. Um, probably a big focus on the UI and having some more screens about projects, the clouds, and then looking at some things with user scenarios where we actually do integrations between the projects. And um, this lists some other things as well, um, including switching over to Sana Boy and some other items like Kubeadm. Um, uh, can I make a remark about Ignition? It's funny because I'm the one that pushed you all to look at that. But with everything happened with CoreOS and, and Red Hat, and, and, I, and I'm not sure what 
the direction is there as an, as an outsider. <laughs> Funny enough, I switched to Cloud Init because Ignition only exists on CoreOS and Freight Car, whatever the, the open fork of that is or the non CoreOS fork is. So it, it would lock y'all into it. I didn't realize at the time it was locking people into a distro that everybody was using CoreOS. Um, so I'm not sure what the future of that is and you know, if uh, that's something that should be considered with respect to what tool to use. Yeah, thanks for that, Andrew. Um, I think what we're thinking is it would be an additional support. So we have cloud in it and then optionally have direct ignition support. Gotcha. And there's some other things, but this is kind of what, what are the parts of the tech that we may adjust? Um, putting time cube ADM in place for the actual uh, bootstrapping of Kubernetes would probably be something on the sooner than later list. The ignition or anything else is probably further out since like you say, it's a core OS specific. Now on the cube ADM is that's, you're saying that's not reliant on the future of the cluster API provider, right? You're looking at it to just bootstrap Kubernetes but eventually maybe if there are enough cluster providers, it could also boot, uh, bootstrap the platform as well. Potentially we could go as far as using the cluster API and with cube ADM if, when and if it gets to that point and it looks gotcha. like now. Right now what we're looking at is the, after the Terraform provisions, the resources, how do you, uh, get Kubernetes installed and brought up and have the cluster connected. So probably be looking at time cube ADM at that point. And then as new features make it to production, as far as in the cube ADM space, we start looking at if it is a good match. Okay, next slide. Working with a lot of groups like the cluster API, so just mentioning um, OpenCI, a lot of the other um, CI CD groups that are in uh, CNCF and Linux Foundation. We are, some of us are, that are on this team are actually at ONS in Amsterdam. So we'll be meeting with more folks um, that are here. If you're here, then reach out. Some of the time we'll probably be at the CNCF booth. Um, otherwise you can ping us on Slack if, if you're in Amsterdam. I'll, I'll be there in the morning. Awesome. You, we'll be at the booth uh, every day for some period of time. But you can catch us on Slack otherwise. So upcoming events, um, we are attending regularly the Network Service Mesh uh, meetings. As that's um, going to be a big feature added into Kubernetes, and we're helping with some of the testing on uh, CNS, uh, the Kubernetes Conformance Working Group, trying to keep track on that, so we're part of that. We will be KubeCon China and doing an intro and deep dive that's the focus on the project adding projects and if anyone's interested in you there please join us and then we'll also be giving a talk in Seattle that's um, potentially the same but we have some other interest and then we'll be going to Envoy Con as well if possible which is right around the same time in Seattle. That's it for us. Any other questions before we go on? Okay, and um, the rest of this is kind of an overview of the, of the dashboard for anyone that's not familiar. If you are, we can just move on. Um, CNCF dashboard builds and goes through the builds and then provisioning the cloud providers and then running tests for all the uh, apps that are supported 
like Fluentd, Cordinas, um, ONAP, which is a Linux Foundation project, actually. That's it. Thanks, everyone who helped put this together. So, Andrew, are you ready for your demo? Uh, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> In the middle of trying to get stuff working. Uh, an intercorder, right? So, yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen. Sounds good. Uh, hold on, let me. Zoom is being Zoom. If I share my screen well. So when you go full screen, my Zoom automatically goes full screen. And then since I'm on a Mac, it takes me to a, a desktop, a new desktop, and then can't share it from there. So that's working. I don't know why this isn't. Anyway, all right. So I have created two uh, things, one of which is probably unnecessary. <laughs> but um, I've been learning. So, yep, Zoom. Thanks. I've been learning. So that's, it's been a good process for me. But so the two things I've created are Yakati and Yakatui. Uh, Yakatui is formerly known as VK8 Conformance. Um, Yakati stands for yet another Kubernetes installer thingy. And it very closely, fo <laughs> it very closely follows uh, Kelsey's hard way, right? So for the, the, the deep dirty secret about me is I worked on Docker as a developer for a year without ever running Docker. I worked on the storage end of it. I didn't have to touch Docker. I just wrote the, the components. I've been involved in Kubernetes and recently wrote my first job spec. So I'm still learning and it's, it's a lot to learn. So part of this was, was learning, but what it does is what it came out of it, I think is something interesting that could be useful for other people. It is essentially a giant shell script. And that's okay, in my opinion, because I use shell check to ensure that it's both POSIX compliant as well as uh, there are no errors. And so what does this shell script do? The stands up Kubernetes. Now, why is that interesting? Well, the, in the example here, you can take two completely disparate Amazon instances that are on different networks. And if ahead of running this, uh, and this assumes you've got the hardware up, Yakitui is for standing up the hardware. This is the VM already exists or the instance exists. You get a etcd discovery URL with the size of uh, the number of nodes in your, um, the, no, sorry, the number of controllers in your control plane, number of control plane nodes. So etcd discovery, I'm gonna get a size of one. That's the number of control plane nodes, right? And then you basically run Yakity on both of uh, your nodes. One is the controller, number of controllers and it says it's a controller and it says but the total number of nodes is two on the second one you say hey you're a worker there are there's one controller and there are two nodes so basically the same on each except one's a controller one's the worker so what happens when you do that <clears throat> i actually could take you through it um takes a little yeah let me move some zoom stuff around um, but, 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 but when do I have something? Yeah. So yeah, I could see could, Yeah. So if I do that, will that work? So, uh, and then, no, it needs to be the name first, Andrew. Up. Uh, hopefully that doesn't blow up. So, um, that's running Yakitui, which bootstraps the hardware. But what makes all this interesting is that it synchronizes the communication between the nodes. Um, and what I mean by that, is that they discover one another. So when you stand up Kubernetes, normally, uh, if you're using kubeadm or you're using any other tool, right, you need to start standing these nodes up in a serial order. You see if one up, and then you can start to stand the others up. With this, you could stand them up all at once. Oh, crap, I used the load balancer. I should have disabled that. You could stand them up all at once. And what happens is, here, I can just take you through the, walk through down here while it's standing up where it downloads the binary downloads the kubernetes binaries but, but creates the admin group ip tables sorry i didn't have a better presentation plan so it discovers the etcd cluster members from that discovery url and because it knows how many controller nodes are supposed to exist um it can every node can wait until they all appear until they've all joined the etcd cluster then the node configures itself with etcd control 
and it uploads information about itself to the etcd host then all of the nodes wait for all the nodes appear to appear in etcd once all the nodes have appeared they everything kind of proceeds as normal uh, dns entries get created routes get created um, in Kubernetes, you know, the CRI, CRI is installed, Kubernetes is installed, um, and uh, that's sort of it. But again, I think the interesting thing about it is the self-discovery aspect of it. It allows you to stand up, you know, 100 nodes really quickly because they can all just uh, self-discover one another, and again, on, on different networks as well. So we've, we've discussed it totally like, how can we, you know, divorce this from the etcd discovery services or a way to do that? And we're, we're kicking around some ideas, but I, I think it's a pretty, uh, at least it, it's, it's a way to do it. I would say nifty, but it's, it's a way to do it so that the, the nodes can all self-discover one another. I haven't seen anything like that, but maybe there is. Again, I'm, I'm still sort of nascent to it all. And it's still creating the load balancer. Oh my gosh, I filed an issue with uh, HashiCore that their load balancer creator takes forever because um, it waits for it to be ready. So that's Yakety. But what Yakitui does is it makes taking Yakety and standing up a cluster and running the conformance tests on it very easy for vSphere. It could be modified for anything. It's kind of similar to cross cloud, except they didn't use modules. So it's not modular right now, it's vSphere only. But essentially, and you saw me run this, I just uh, do a Docker run, give it some config information, give it the name of the image, and just do uh, the name of the cluster and then say up. And then once the cluster is up, you can just run the image again and say test, and it schedules the E to E tests. And it does that because Yakety has the ability to install the Kubernetes testing binaries on all of the nodes that have kubelets, where uh, all the worker nodes. And so this schedules a job on the cluster that maps the E to E test binaries into the job and runs the conformance tests. And then you can just follow the tests with the T log, and then you can just turn down the cluster. It also has the ability to download and up, uh, the test results and upload them to GCS. As Eric, uh, and I will never say his name, his last name correctly because I've not been told, and it looks like Vegeta or Fajita, I don't know. But as Eric Vegeta said, essentially I, you know, recreate parts of Prowl here uh, and that this will probably be what we move or migrate into Prowl. Uh, we'll still under the covers use Yakety to stand up the clusters because there's still not a great solution for that for us. But for actually running the tests, once the clusters are up, we'll probably be migrating to cube test and, and Prowl at some point in the future. Without the load balancer, by the way, this takes about a minute and a half. So it's pretty quick. Um, it has the option to use an Amazon load balancer to, in order to make the cluster accessible externally, which is useful for things like Travis CI. So I don't have a, I can show you what the end result of this looks like. Unfortunately, it's not great at the moment. In fact, I even have to go over, here. where would I have to go to show you? I have to go over here because it's been failing forever. Because we, uh, I don't know if, how many of you are in SIG testing, but I mentioned that um, we hit a timeout. It turns out that, yeah, it turns out that uh, Travis is limited to uh, 50 minutes for free builds. Yeah, it's not active, so I'm not going to, am I even going to get a build history? Okay, yeah, there we go. So where is, uh, do I have a 50 minute build? Uh, so show more. Sorry, I'm just seeing if I had the 50 minute one. Oh, you know what? I, I sent it to, I sent that link to the group. Sorry, I'm sorry again that one, I'm apologizing so much and two that I don't have it ready. Uh, yeah, here we go. It was come, I don't know why I didn't find it. Probably because I reran. Oh, it was marked as an error, that's why, because I was looking for green. But uh, when it's working, it just, it. it died because of the uh, timeout. But I mean, it ran through 50 minutes of the conformance tests for anyone who, you know, familiar with them. And it would eventually have uploaded them if it had been able to. Luckily, and I love Travis CI, I've used it for years. I emailed them this morning and they're gonna increase the time limit for us for a few weeks until we can figure out how, how to get to Prowl. 
So this stood up the cluster over here. It waits for it to come online. So link, thanks for all the fish. So um, this is the load balancer. A couple of interesting things about it. It uses an Engin Nginx proxy at the front so that it can answer on um, pure HTTP so that uh, the Amazon load balancer can actually access the, the backend cluster. It also includes some nice information like what are the artifact that was used to stand this thing up? So if you want to know that, um, or job YAML. You know, here's the job that you can use, job spec that you can use to actually run the test. So you could schedule that. So if I do a, where is it? Yeah, cube cuddle, cube config, uh, data. What did I just stand up? Yes, yeah, CI latest. Um, cube config. Oh, so that's not the one I stood up. I stood up Andrew, sorry. Cube config and then do git. And yeah, so I mean, that's I, like I said, I should probably, I need to put together some slides, um, but I, I just been so busy trying to wrap up the end of the quarter that. I didn't want to punt this demo again. Um, let me, uh, last thing, let me SSH into one of the boxes so that I can show you, actually this one's up so I can show you this, pseudo journal control, let's see you. Uh, Why, well, that didn't look like, oh, did I kill that ahead of time? Failed to install, oh, son of a gun. That's an old one. So if I exit that, I, might, uh, I can still show you that if there's an error there. Like I said, I've been trying to get this to work. Let me see if it shows the waiting. Now, just just too much in the way. Um, let me let me go to a um, controller node. That will show it. Um, One forty one. So this does not throw the cubelet on the controller nodes. This stands everything up as system D services. The cubelet only exists on the workers. Um, and I'm finding a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people expect the cubelet to be up on the worker node, which I find interesting. Sorry, on the control plane node. I find interesting because uh, to me, that's just like a security surface issue. Like don't put the cubelet there if you don't need to. So one of the aspects of this is that might be interesting to you, Taylor, is it doesn't rely on shared DNS because it actually runs core DNS on all the control plane nodes. And it's not using core DNS for the service DNS, although it could, it has the option to use that instead of cube DNS. Um, although when I enable it, the DNS tests fail, but DNS works for service. I don't, I don't understand that. I haven't tried to debug it. What it does is it installs D core DNS on all the control plane nodes. And so once all of the nodes are aware of each other, they all register themselves with DNS. And what they do is there, they, there's a round robin A record so that you can just do host, you know, K8S is the name of the cluster. And all the nodes know about K8S.VMware.CI even though that doesn't exist outside the cluster. Um, and CO1, oh, do I not have, uh, what is this? 192, oh, it's, one six eight three one four one. I'm making too many changes. Host co one dot vmware dot ci. Yeah, I guess I didn't have the suffix set up correctly. Yeah, so and then and then they wait on all the hosts to appear. And I believe I I believe I actually got this part working the other day. Yeah, so it also sets up a C name for the load balancer so that it doesn't uh, paper clip to try to access it if you're trying to access the load balancer. So it doesn't, yeah, again, it doesn't need the, the shared DNS because it just stands up DNS inside. Oh, the, I keep forgetting, sorry. Um, because they all discover one another, all of the certs have both the IP addresses and the uh, dom uh, host names in it. So if I do, um, uh, open SSL X509, no outs, text. What did I do wrong? Oh. Uh, 
So you can see that it has the addresses of the controller nodes, even though they weren't known at the, uh, they wouldn't have been known ahead of time because this is actually using uh, DHCP. None of these are using static IP addresses. Uh, what you do is you can either pass in a certificate to Yakety or Yakatui, however you want to look at it. And if you pass in a CA, it will sign everything using that CA. You actually can run an up command like I just did without a CA. And although Terraform isn't great at being modular in the aspect that you don't get to say only use Amazon if these environment variables are enabled. Um, I tried that with cross cloud and it just doesn't work because if you've got the provider enabled, it wants to configure itself. Um, so what we actually do is the entry point of the, the Docker image. If there are, if it detects uh, the AWS access keys, it actually copies in the load balancer config and the external cube config generator into the project inside the container. So it'll generate the CA for you. So this whole thing is using TLS, but with essentially a, a CA that gets generated for this cluster. And uh, you can access it outside of Docker as well, obviously, because the cube config file just gets dropped here. I mean, Taylor, this should look very you know, similar to you. Um, there's the, the cube config file. And uh, when you actually, if you actually run the tests, so I won't, I'm not gonna run a new one. I'm gonna use an old one here, T log. This will actually show you what happens when you do a log against an existing test that's run. There, I just ran one of the tests to make it quick. But yeah, so that would tail the logs until they were done. And then you could do T put to upload them to GCS. So. So that, I mean, that's it. Uh, it the self-discovery, you don't need shared DNS. All certs have IPs and domain names. And then the Yakitui driver stands up vSphere and makes some, you know, makes running the EDE tests against vSphere pretty easy. But I think Yakity is the more interesting part to most people, probably. Any questions? All right, well, thank you very much. Um, I, I really do like the DNS. Uh, for quick start, um, and getting anyone going, being able to not worry about DNS is nice. Um, yeah, uh, that, that was. I think like, that we're going to want to do something like that. Yeah, and, and, the not, and having certs with both IPs and names was nice. Although, in fairness, the fact that cross clouds didn't help to catch a bug in the Kubernetes, in my opinion, like they, they changed the default setting and all of a sudden they preferred IPs over domain names. Um, but I, I like that it can support both. And I, I like that it can just, you know, you can connect two nodes, one on GCS and one on Amazon. So it supports reverse lookups and yeah, it just kind of works, hopefully, when it, you know, <laughs> except when it doesn't. But yeah, so if any, anyone has any other questions or want to take a look at it, please feel free to hit the, the GitHub page. It's linked in the docs. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. I think the next person HH, are you available to talk a little bit about API Snoop and um, Kubernetes test infrastructure CI? Test yes. Info? yes, please. Let me see if if I can share okay. my screen. Um, it's not always, okay, doesn't always work. Um, <clears throat> let me know if you see anything. If not, I'll drop links. <laughs> Do you see anything? Um, I can see, and if you can drop links, I think that'd be good too. All right. Um, unfortunately, I, I can no longer see the window that uh, I'm sharing. It's all black. So I'm going to stop sharing and, and do the, the link dropping. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Um, something around my X setup and, and various things. So I'm going to use the, the, the chat area, um, or should I use the uh, Maybe if I use the CI working group. Um, yes, I go ahead and drop. 
drop them in the chat is fine. And if you want to add them to the notes, that would be. If you put them in the chat, I'll put them in the notes. OK, that's fair. So where, 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 do you see where the notes went? Oh, there they are. Yeah, so first of all, um, there's the API's loop interface. And if you'll click on that little bit there, and uh, one of the things that we wanted to be able to do is show our change in coverage over time to see how well our community is doing and in, in, at, at a minimum hitting the various um, endpoints uh, that are provided by the Kubernetes interface. Um, and we spent a lot of time trying to figure out uh, uh, you know, spinning up the clusters and getting the data in a place where it can be consumed is, 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 a, is a problem. <laughs> Um, and as we dug into the various tool chains that are available within our community, um, we found uh, the, the, the CI systems provided by um, Test Infra uh, and SIG Testing um, are kind of where they're coalescing it, it, for, for Kubernetes for sure. And um, if, you, if you go to the, the there's, a, there's a drop down. It's not quite obvious it's a drop down. We may need to make some UI changes to that. Um, but it says Kubernetes EDE conformance kube test, because we're running kube test and not um, Sonoboy yet. We're quite, um, but there's uh, dev 1.9, dev 1.10, dev 1.11, dev 1.12, and our original manual import of stuff from May 30th of this year. Um, if you mouse down over those, um, we've uh, brought in the audit logs now. This is all generated from audit logs rather than, than uh, spreadsheets um, that gets pulled into the, to the visualization. Um, in this particular instance at this moment, it's still somewhat manual, but we have found a much better place than trying to generate the data manually ourselves. Um, and I'm going to drop a link here. This is test grid. Test grid, um, and I'll drop two links. Test grid is where all of the jobs, um, some of the jobs, uh, prow jobs, get published uh, in a way that we can group them together in meaningful ways. Um, the second link there is specifically for our conformance um, prow jobs that get grouped together. Underneath that, you'll see we have um, GCE. Uh, for master, 112, 111, 110, 119 for dev and release, and, and the same thing for kind and uh, DigitalOcean and OpenStack and Baidu. And um, the, it's, it's, it's a process to get there. Um, but because of the work we've done to integrate the audit logs into the, the main process, that's now available um, for every, every job. Uh, that at least it's part of conformance. Um, and we found that uh, I, I think one of the things we're going to be working uh, within API Snoop is to take um, automatically pull in what's available via test grid and, and uh, make that uh, render it in a way where we have one rendering of the, of the API Snoop Starburst, but other really, um, we're going to allow anybody to spin up the stuff and have a different view and, and provide their input. And that's one of the, like this week, we're doing some refactoring of the UI. So you can spin it up um, and point it to these different repos and, and start working on visualizations so that you have access to the same data um, that the API Snoop team is, is working with. Um, so the next next thing I want to show you, um, if, you'll, if we're in the conformance group, and I'm going to click on um, uh, GCE 112 dev, and it's passing. And so that takes us to, to here. And then if I click on about and I go see these results in Gubernator, it's kind of a little dance to get down to it. But um, that takes us to this particular test and all of its jobs that have popped out of it. I'm going to click on job 139. So we see, yay, it was a beautiful test and all the things passed. And inside, beyond the logs, and I'm going to go click through a couple steps. We can get through and pull down all of the wonderful data that's available on the master node. And the best thing there, for, for API Snoop anyway, is the API server um, audit log. So I'm going to copy that link location. This is the piece of data that we'll be able to go all the way from the different groupings of our conformance groups to pulling in the raw audit log, possibly directly into the browser using um, node and some other, other fun bits. Um, 
this wouldn't be possible without Prow. So um, if there's any questions, I feel free to stop. I'm, not, I'm just kind of freeforming here. I don't have a Prezi. Um, Prowl's been really great in that it does a couple of things. One, it manages the merging so that our communities, uh, particularly you know, the many, 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 many repos inside Kubernetes uh, can be merged in a safe way. Um, it also provides some plugins for managing the conversations and, uh, and, and things. And I'll go into that a little bit later, but I, I, want, I wanted to acknowledge that this is a really great tool that um, would be great to use beyond just Kubernetes, but possibly in the CNCF community um, at large. Um, that's probably enough for API Snoop. We're get, when we, we need more data. And I think we need data beyond what's available in just the audit logs. Um, I know that Catherine uh, did some really beautiful work to modify the Go, um, the Go test infrastructure to when you create a binary, augmenting the binary so that it generates every second an HTML file with test coverage. It looks really cool, but we need to integrate that so that the artifacts are available inside the uh, inside the Kubernetes 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 um, artifacts, and so that's one thing we'll be working on soon. Um, but uh, one of the see so API snoop issues. I'm gonna now kind of step away from the. Uh, so for first, is there any questions about API snoop and the and the thoughts and processes that we're doing right now before I go on to um, the next topic? I'll take that silence as a go ahead. Um, I'm going to drop a link to something, a thought, a thought. As, as the API Snoop team is dug in deep into the uh, test infra provided by um, SIG testing and the Kubernetes community, we found um, there's some really useful tooling there that might be useful within the CNCF as a whole. Um, but it is, it requires some some technical things, and I thought it might be interesting to see what would it be like if we automated some of the interactions with our community to allow them to connect and benefit from some of this infrastructure. So um, we're going to do this in the form of <clears throat> a short skit. I'm going to step out of the way and become a robot. Um, I will be, play the part of the CNCFCI bot, and uh, my friend Berno here is going to play the part of Hippie Hacker submitting a PR. Uh, you can follow along at the issue that I posted in the channel. Hi. As a CNCF project admin, I would like to request some CI automation from CNCF in order to benefit from the CI infrastructure maintained by our community. Given that the repo that is included in CNCF's landscape, when I create a ticket within the repo and tag it at CNCF CI, and I grant CNCF CI admin to my repo, then CNCF CI will automatically configure my project for Prow and add other services. So, at CNCF-CI. Did you ask me something? Oh, hi, hi, HH. Um, I, I'm not a bot yet, but, but I, I can be. Um, in order for the CNCF to provide the CI services you need, I, I'm gonna need you to grant me admin access. Um, <clears throat> you can go to this little link here and, uh, and add me. Um, I'll message you when I've uh, accepted that and we can continue. At that point, I'll be able to configure your web hooks, change your labels, merge your PRs, and pass everything that passed your CI test, and, and work with a lot of stuff. There'll be some interesting slash commands that are available here, and you can read about them. Um, just let me know, and, uh, and uh, add me to your admin, and I'll let me know. All right. CNCFCI, add it to as an admin. Awesome. While I was away, and as you added me as an admin, um, I configured the slash commands for you. But there's some other things that I can configure for you, uh, including Prow and all its various plugins. Um, here's a list of all the things that you could configure, um, but uh, in addition to those helping to manage your PRs and your repos and conversations, um, uh, you can also uh, help, I can help add you to test grid um, and, for example, adding your, your project to the conformance um, for test grid. Um, what's really cool about being added in this way is your results, past and future, will be available via Gubernator, including your logs and your artifacts. Um, and what, what that allows is for some really cool integration with the rest of our community, uh, including projects such as API Snoop and the CNCF cross-cloud dashboard. Um, if you need any help beyond this, uh, please join the CNCF CI Slack or attend meetings like this public uh, CNCF CI working group meeting 
or join the mailing list. All right. Um, thanks. It looks brilliant. Let's enable some simple plugins. Can we do cat and dog maybe? Done. You now have the cat and dog plugin. Why don't you give the cat commands meow and wolf a try? All right. Slash meow. Ah, oh, kitty. One cat. <laughs> okay. So that, that's a that's our demo. Um, but I just think this might encourage some conversation around how we can um, uh, enable our communities to start um, con getting data together in a way that we can get some real insight across the CNCF community and their artifacts and their um, particularly uh, when we're looking at audit logs, for example, in the way of API Snoop and the way of Catherine's um, code coverage tool, we'll be able to use some machine learning and some other um, pattern analysis to see how our community is using Kubernetes and create some really meaningful conformance tests based on that insight. Um, so this is all tied together with API Snoop, but it's really about CNCF CI for our entire community and how we can provide data for our projects as a whole. So I'm gonna hand, uh, open it up for questions. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks, HH. Crickets. <laughs> like to see um, the visuals on that, especially if you can get uh, maybe some slides together. Uh, the that last the last part reminded me of something Ed from the Network Service Mesh put together for intro, and it's kind of a skit. It's all. Uh, drawings and slides, and he can go through the interactions between um, a user and uh, someone coming in to use it. Maybe taking what you have and having it written up so that you can get the visuals to tie along with the story would be good. Okay, let's see who's next on the agenda. I think, uh, Ben, are you there for the Prometheus yeah. side? Yeah, so um, I just want to say hi. Uh, I, I'm on the Prometheus team, uh, and I, I work at GitLab. And I just want to bring up, like, you know, we've been having our own discussion for the Prometheus pipeline, or for the Prometheus team, for all of our different CI pipelines, because we have a bit of inconsistency in our, our configurations. Um, <clears throat> and I linked to the dis our, our internal discussion on that and wanted to find out like more about what the CNCFCI project was all about and see if there's anything that um, uh, we could use or you could use or uh, what that collaboration was like. So it's kind of just want to give a quick intro and say hi. Um, uh, I don't know if you want ha have any specific questions for me yet or if I should just keep rambling about what we're doing. Rambling. Good. If you want to, I, I know you shared, shared a link. If, if you want to run through anything there, that's fine. Um, as far sure. as cloud team goes, I'm happy to talk if, like I said, if you have time and uh, can meet us at the CNCF booth or choose a Slack message. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll out. be there. I'll be there tomorrow. Um, I'm giving a talk on, on monitoring stuff at uh, uh, in the morning and then I'll be around. Um, so basically, uh, okay. uh, Prometheus project, uh, we have, we also have a whole bunch of different repos that run different CIs. Uh, some stuff uses Travis, some stuff uses Circle. Uh, one project uh, uses uh, BuildKite. Uh, and all of this is, uh, uh, has different requirements for different things. And some stuff is historical because uh, we added circle because we couldn't, uh, we originally couldn't publish our Docker images with, uh, and our GitHub, uh, uh, releases, uh, with, with Travis. So we, we ran tests in Travis, but ran our, our release builds in circle. And so we're just like, we want to consolidate this and, uh, and want to see what the CNCF was actually doing about, uh, uh, testing and builds. Um, and 
and you know see what the rec what what you're what you've been working on and what you've been provide what you're planning on providing. Um, uh, what else? Um, yeah, or we and we have one project that we use BuildKite because we need to be able to do uh, building and testing on non x86 platforms uh, and also testing on non Linux platforms. So we have some some BSD builds uh, and some and and some uh, some PowerPC builds because the the architecture specific compiles need to be tested. Awesome. Okay, we've brought up the this document that you shared in the notes. And <laughs> as far as um, Crossplot CI uh, goes, I think we may have spoken, either I spoke with you, Ben, or someone else many, many months back, a little bit about what we were doing. Um, from a CNCF support side for uh, helping with CICD, the cross-cloud dashboard and the, the tools underneath would be one of the projects. There's a lot of other projects. HH is talking, I was just talking about some of them. Um, I think probably be good to just maybe chat and go through some of these and look at what the big needs are and maybe um, HH should be interested in taking a look at this. Sure, we could do that tomorrow um, or, or any other time. Okay. And then HH, if, I mean, if this is something you have time for and want to check out, I know that you're involved with a lot of the different groups. Um, Kubernetes wise is on the testing side and across CNCF. Uh, the, Ben, the, um, open CI, that was, a, I think, did we have a link earlier in the slides? I think I may have, I'm trying to go back. Uh, the open CI group might be something to get involved okay. with because there's a lot of different groups on that that are doing um, a lot of different systems that they're using and that could be helpful for Prometheus. Sure. And then I think y'all have access, uh, at least I, if I recall right, the CNCF uh, lab with packet.net for running stuff. So basically resources. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're using, we're using packet uh, for running uh, our build cut builds. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if um, you can catch us while we're at the booth and then, and then maybe hop on Slack on the cloud native Slack and the CNCF CI channel. Yeah, I think I, I think I already hopped on that. Okay, great. Um, if you want to drop the link and maybe tag um, HH and myself and um, let's see, I don't know anyone else is interested. Melvin, I don't, you may be interested. I know that there's a lot of different things that we're, each of us are doing and we're trying to get the action, the CI working group itself, um, any of the projects that would be beneficial for others. So ideally, if there's something that Prometheus needs, we can try to have something in place that's reusable by other CNCF projects. Cool. Um, let's see. I think. The only other item on the agenda was we were having some build uh, failures with Prometheus actually on the CNCF CI dashboard in a CI dev environment. And it looks like it could be something with dependencies that we need to add to the Docker container. So it's, something I think we need to defer and maybe reach out, but we have a, um, we'll have a public ticket and maybe tag, tag y'all if, if we need some help system. On yeah, you're, you're always welcome to contact the uh, Prometheus dash team. Okay. Uh, email. Sounds good. 
And we noticed this actually started in um, 2.4.0. So it's, um, we've been doing various changes on our end to support the new clouds and various things. So could be tied into that uh, dependencies. Don't know, but we'll take a look and then reach out otherwise. I think that's it. Unless someone else has anything, stop here. So, okay. Um, slide 28. Okay. So uh, this is monthly. Again, next meeting on October 23rd. Besides the Slack, uh, Cloud Native Slack, uh, CNCFCI, there's a mailing list which you can subscribe to. And that's it. Thanks a lot, folks. Have a good one.